Hello everyone. In this episode, I'm answering a viewer question that I recently had, and that was, how do we apply a shader to an object in Das Studio? And I will get right to the point and show you how to do that, but I'll also, for those of you with a little bit more patience, I will also explain the differences between a shader and a material preset and why one doesn't work on another object that it's not designed for. Let's take a look here. I have a little well, mini scene with two dresses. One is loaded from the content library and one's loaded from the smart content tab. I will just go over to this one here. That's the city dress. And if I uh, look in my material presets folder for this dress, I can double click any of these with the dress selected and that will select different materials on any of the surfaces of my dress. So these are things that the vendor has made out of touch from Rotenburg under Wimmer. Thank you so much for putting this together. It's a renderosity product. And uh, yes, this is, you can see that the, that a material preset changes various material zones on the dress. But if I wanted to use one of the shaders that I've bought from the marketplace, perhaps, I would have to go and select a surface on this dress first, then select the shader, double click it, and that'll apply that. So that'll all happen on the Surfaces tab. If you don't have that open, open it now. That's under Window, Tabs, and there's Surfaces down here. Open that up and dock it somewhere. And we can see that this particular dress, and it really depends on the object here, this particular dress has two surfaces. It has a skirt and a top, and they're descriptively named. I like that. So the skirt is obviously the bottom part, and the top is obviously the top part. So if I select my top here, then I can go over to my presets over here, open my shader tree, open iRay because I'm assuming that's what we want to use. And then I'll pick something in the long list of shaders, so perhaps fabric. I'll pick one that I like, perhaps the pink knit here. And with that surface selected, so this is important, in editor, this surface that you want to apply the shader to needs to be selected. And then double click it and shader changes. There we go. And I can say, well, I don't quite like that. I like the white knit instead. So you can just go and you know do that and do that for any of the surfaces on your object. You can, instead of going over to the editor and then picking the particular surface that you want, you can also use a different tool for that. I have it up here in my toolbar. This is it here. This is called the surface selection tool. I can either pick that from here or you can head over to tools and pick the surface selection tool from there. Or you can use Alt Shift M. With that, you can hover over an object and you can see that the material zones kind of light up in orange or orangey yellow here. So some materials, sorry, some objects are more complex than others. That somehow sort of like a primitive only has one material zone called default. Others have multiple. And with this tool, you can kind of zoom in and hover over and pick the surface that you like to change. So maybe I'm going to pick the skirt now. And you can see this correlates actually in the surface description tree. If I choose the top, the top gets highlighted. If I choose the skirt, then the skirt gets highlighted or highlight, whatever. You head over to presets and then you pick another shader and that applies that by double clicking it. There we go. So that is how you apply a shader. Let me go back to my regular selection tool and choose the other dress now and zoom in on that. That is one that I've loaded in from the Smart Content tab, and that also comes with various material presets. You can see that they tell you it's in the Smart Content tab, they do that. They tell you it's a material preset. MDL means that this is made for iRay. The other ones are called RSL. Often they're made for the render man shading language, so that's 3D Light. They usually don't work if you want to render an iRay. But the MDL ones, they say material, that designates this thing as a material preset that will work with this dress. And this is really the big difference between shaders and material presets. So a shader describes the properties that the render engine needs to make this look a certain way once the picture is rendered. So how reflective is it? How glossy is it? Does it look like concrete? Does it look like, I don't know, a brick wall or does it look like fabric? That sort of thing. That's all set in the shader. But a material preset also saves those properties, but they're not a generic 
abstracted way of describing the surface and it could be applied to anything. That's a shader. A material preset describes the surface properties of this particular object. So only this object can accept these material definitions or presets if you like. So I can double click them and this changes. But if I use the same bits and pieces and pick my other dress here, the city dress, I'm going to double click this now with the city dress selected, nothing happens. And that's because the material preset or rather Das Studio says, hey look, what you're asking me to put on this dress that those things don't exist those i'm i'm being told i'm supposed to put these descriptions on these surfaces i'm looking for those surfaces they don't exist sorry i'm not doing anything but what you could do and this is how you can kind of make your own shader if you say well actually i'd like for this pattern here or let's say the 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 orange circle bits here. I really like this pattern. I'd like to apply it to my other dress. Well, what you could do theoretically is you could turn any of the surface descriptions here into a shader and then apply that shader to the other dress. Let's see if that works. It won't because uh, there's, a, there's a very important thing that we need to understand. It's usually generic shaders are made up of tileable textures. So when the textures repeat, they will you can just put them next to one another and, and build a whole long large pattern out of it and you won't see the seams when you do that but this dress i have a feeling is not made like that so if i look at the base channel you can see that this is actually the texture you can see that they have cut out the bits that make up the patterns of the dress and this texture is not tileable so this is only meant to be used on this particular dress which is why this doesn't come with a shader but, you know, just to tell you the principle, if you do pick a surface of the dress, so in my case it's dress 1 and dress 2 here, probably for the top and the bottom part, I'm going to pick the top one. To make a shader, you have to pick a single channel of the material, of sorry, of the object in the surfaces tab. And when you do that, you can head over to File, Save As, and then you don't use shaping preset, which looks almost the same. No, it's a shader preset. That is what we need to save. And you can save that out. You can give it a location. If you put it directly into the library path, into your shaders location, it'll, it'll go there. It'll show up as a thumbnail. I'm just going to put it on my desktop. Say so save. It already exists. Yeah, that's fine. And on here, I can now see that I'm being asked, hey, we've got this channel here called Dress 1. This is what you want to save. You get the option to save all channels that are described here, or you can deselect some. If you say, well, I'm not, I don't really want to save the metallic flakes or the top code properties of this particular surface description as a shader, you can just untick that. And then you can say, accept. I might just go and leave them on here and say, accept. And that's that. That's your shader created. Now watch what happens. This is kind of where the system falls down. If I go over to my city dress again and I'll go and pick the skirt part onto which I may want to apply this shader, you can either go into the presets folder, find your shader here if you've saved it in that location. I haven't done that, so I'm going to have to bring it in with file merge. It's another way to bring and merge items into your scene. If you don't have them in your library, you just double click a thumbnail. This is a way to bring, do the same thing, but if they're not saved in the library there, you hit merge and then I'm finding my shader here on the, on the desktop. When I apply it, watch what happens. It kind of works. I kind of brought the, the little circles across here, but of course it doesn't work particularly well because the shader has also now taken across the black parts in the texture and this was not meant to be tileable. So, you know, parts of it have worked, parts of it have not worked. But this is a way to bring one kind of material description from one surface over to another object by saving it out as a shader and then applying it. If you wanted to make your own shaders, you can do that. Many people choose to do that. There's, there's tools for that. You can create yourself tileable textures. You can also use tools like Substance Painter or Substance Designer rather to create tileable textures. There's a ton of tutorials on YouTube how to do this with Photoshop. Then you will just do this and plug all these textures into the particular channels here, wherever that is. So base would be the diffuse channel. You've got the metallicity and you've got emissions and geometry cutouts and all that. If you put that into the correct channels, then you can save this out. And then it's a tileable shader if your textures line up that way.
So there we go. That's the, that's how you apply a shader to an object. That's how you create a shader. And that is also why material presets from one object don't work on another. And also why not every shader is a generic shader. I hope that answers that question. If you have any more, then please drop them in the comments below. Also, if you found this tip helpful and useful, please consider supporting me either on Patreon or Ko-fi or new now on YouTube. You can do, you can click the join button or you can sign up on Patreon or Ko-fi, drop a buck into my tip jar. I'd greatly appreciate that. There's other benefits that come with it, like early access and ad-free access videos. You also get Discord access to my private server that not everyone gets. I even do private sessions if you're interested in that. That was it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.